So, we're a few days into Mermaid and I have not drawn a single mermaid, so today we're going to rectify that and try to play a little bit of ketchup. Mmm, yum. I like ketchup. So let's jump into my sketchbook and draw some mermaids. Now, I never seem to care for mermaid props. I don't know what it is. They never tickle my fancy. They don't inspire the old noggin, but I came across C Lemon, another YouTuber, check out her channel. She made the cutest prompt list of my life. Look at this. You know how much I like making food into people. So fruit into mermaids just seems like another logical choice. 30 different fruits. So I thought, why not 30 different fruit themed mermaids? Um, I'll link to this. You can do it too if you'd like, or just draw the fruit or however you want to do it. But I thought this would be a lot of fun. So that's what I'm going to do. Day one, which is watermelon. I'm going to try to get through a couple of these, try to catch up, but not rush myself. We'll see what happens. In an ideal world and situation, I would spend at least a day on each of these and like really try to come up with a cool character design based off each fruit. But alas, we do not live in a perfect world. So I'm just going to do what we can. It's always best to start, even if you're not ready. And just see what happens. I thought I'd use a color ace pencil today because I was kind of hoping to maybe use some watercolors because I don't know, mermaids, watercolors, it seems natural. But if that doesn't work out, I've got a laundry list of plan Bs, we'll be fine. I love that this is first because watermelon is one of those fruits that just has so much going on, so many things to steal from and put into your design. Let's put the arms up, why not? Let's make them squishy. The cool thing about Mermaid is just how squiggly you can draw a character. I think it's two years ago now, I actually did Mermaid each and every day. And I was drawing like multiple mermaids a day, not to brag. But like it did so, <laughs> it did so much for just loosening up my art. So I definitely recommend drawing a couple mermaids if that's something that you struggle with too. There's colors is definitely gonna be a big, big thing for this. I just realized you can see this face. Well, that's not distracting. Now, when I think of a watermelon, I do think of a lot more rounded shapes. I know when you slice it, you kind of have that hard edge. So that might be an interesting shape to include in her bra. I want to take as much inspiration from the fruit as possible because that's the point, right? I'm thinking like a high waist so that we include a lot of maybe like the green stripey outer side of the watermelon. And just from this, like, just from these shapes, it's kind of giving me a more vintage vibe. So I might play that up a bit more with the hairstyle. We could include like the seeds as like polka dots on this thing, or we could even give her pink skin and green hair or something crazy like that. This is where I'm gonna need some, uh, <laughs> some color to really see how this is gonna work. See, like this is a super exaggerated shape. <laughs> And that's really important to do when you're sketching and then you can kind of tone it down a bit but include that and it's going to capture the fluidity a bit better as you tone it down a smidge and keep her arms out of the way just so i can see her design light swish at the end of the ponytail i think i'm going to keep that shape i mentioned like the watermelon slices but i'm going to like add a rim on the bottom I think that'll add to the vintage vibe. We could also poke out the bra a little, give it more that bullet bra shape. Like everything's gonna be round and soft except for this. And I think that kind of gives it that watermelon slice vibe. But maybe this will be green and stripey too. And then I think she's something like tying up her hair. Ooh, that gives me some time for some lemon slice, or lemon slices, watermelon slices. Seed dots on there too. I mean, maybe what all she's missing is the color, you know, cause that's going to definitely send it even further in the watermelon direction, you know, if you use the right colors. Shoot, this is filthy. <laughs> it's my favorite watercolors here. Personal favorite is just this guy. It's dirty too. <laughs> well, if that ain't a character reference of me, I don't know what is. Oh, look how pretty it is having just like rainbows in frame. Heck yeah. Ideally, I'd probably use a little bit of both, but I'm trying to limit myself here. So we'll just, and I guess we'll start with the green, darker green, lighter green. I just mix it with more water. And then uh, the, 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 the little pinky red color. Oh, I didn't decide if I wanted to like give her a natural skin tone or a little bit more watermelon-y. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the darker green right now while it's still wet so it can like kind of blend outwards, not be too harsh of a line. Now keep in mind, this is not a watercolor sketchbook by any means. I just don't care. <laughs> Art to me is not about creating some kind of perfect end result, but just about doing what I want. I guess someone would call that expressing themselves. I don't have a poetic knowledge of the English language. <laughs> it's 
so I don't. Hey, that looks watermelony to me. I like the way it's mixing with the purple and creating a bit of a muddy kind of naturalness. I don't know, but it looks kind of cool. I want dark red lips. Uh, this should be dark red. Well, actually, wait, let me keep that still kind of light. We're gonna try and build up towards the center or the top half of it. Cause you know how watermelon has a bit of a texture to it. It's kind of got those like lighter sections near the the rind. Is that the rind? And then as it gets to the center, it's darker. So a little variety, I think will really help it look watermelony. And all that's drawing, I'll go, go get an actual cup of water so I can clean my brushes properly. Hulk is dirty water and Mike is the clean water. I'm hoping if I say it all loud, you know, it'll help me remember. I feel like I skimped out on including the tail. What does this look like? That's not what I'm looking for. I think I'm gonna make the hair green though. I mean, it is up to me. I think I'd like it the dark green or I can try to make it the stripies. That would be fun. Let me try and do the stripes. So we do a light layer of this. Get, don't make sure I don't get too close to the pink. In the future, I'm definitely gonna have to try doing some more unnatural skin tones. Like, I don't know, like a blueberry could have blue skin sort of situation. For the first one, this seems fine. And what would happen if I use like this for the seeds? No, I don't think pink works. I didn't really put thought into the angle of these. Yeah, so those are not dark enough. Might have to go black. You know what also might be a good idea is using like an Ohu marker or something. Should I try and use chocolate or burnt sienna? Let's try burnt sienna. As much as I love chocolate. Oh, look at the difference that makes. And because this is a brush pen, I can get some really good control over the shape of these things. I think I'm gonna draw a line here. Add to that vintage shape like contrasty seam things. And then maybe here too. It definitely needs some kind of line work. It definitely doesn't have enough pink. Cause like a watermelon I think is more like my guess would be 60% <laughs> pink, 40% green. And I kind of went the opposite of that. Just a little, uh, little silhouette. Just something kind of small and swishy. I'm gonna try using these markers more. I like how stiff that brush is. You can get a lot of control out of it, even with my heavy hands. Ooh, I like this so much better already. It's the more simplified version of it, not taking it quite as seriously. I think I was drawing a little bit too much with my brain in that one, if that makes any sense. Not being very expressive. Which can happen when you haven't drawn in a while. I might come back to that. Because watermelon, again, is like just such a fun fruit. Let's see what the next one is on the list. All right, the next fruit is actually a blueberry. <laughs> so none of these colors are going to come in handy at all. I think I want to do it kind of reverse. This time I, I like ended with a little s s tiny guy. I want to start with the little tiny guy and then add more details as I go. Because I think the silhouette is important, obviously, yes. Very important. So let's start there with number two. What are blueberries? Short and round. They have those little pokey edges and they're blue. Let's start with the silhouette. Very round face, I think. Almost circular would be a good idea for this fruit. And it has those like pokies, you know, at the top. So maybe some hair that does this. Shoot, she doesn't have legs. How am I gonna do this? This pose, I was like thinking one knee's kind of up and the other legs pointed down. That's not gonna work. Oh, well, that's cute. Kind of use the fins as feet and flare them. Okay, now for the design, I guess I should stick with a lot of circles. Blueberries are kind of like round and pokey. We probably could keep it kind of simple since so much of it's gonna be blue. There's our circle. <laughs> Incorporate a lot of circles, circles, circles. Um. If I did circles down here, it'd look like grapes, and that's not what we're looking for. Maybe it'll just like gradient into the darker blue as it gets down. We'd also kind of round out the fins to keep to that blueberry theme. Now she looks a little bit more like an orca. Orca! Oh, we can include like little fins that come around here. I should look up some fish anatomy so that I don't sound so stupid. I'm thinking it'll be darker down here, and then maybe a little bit lighter near the belly. 
with the ever so slight gradient. That is what I'm picturing. I actually really like that pose too. <laughs> Again, it's simple, but sometimes going overboard is not the best idea either. Little round nose, round face. Round eyes. <laughs> I don't want to miss out on the fins again. Let's try and curl that in. Hmm, I don't know when the last thing I said was, but working on the body. Included it um, I really rounded it off so they include that fins. I gotta include some bubbles because they're round. Just like blueberries. Oh, I'm really liking the way this one's turning out. See, this was just the warm up. <laughs> I may or may not have drawn in two weeks. It's fine. Stick a blobfish in here too. This one is fun. I am enjoying drawing this. Let's see if her legs were here. I was drawing a leg. I'd probably have one foot come down like this, and the other foot coming out like that. So then I wanted a little bit lighter in the centermost section, getting darker as it gets towards the fin. Do I want to include straps? Hmm, that looks like underwear. <laughs> Actually, you know what I could do? I could make the the cups look a little bit more like a blueberry. All right now they're just circles. But I'm thinking if I just add little like pokey bits to the top, they kind of look like tomatoes. Um, ooh, ooh, wait, what if it's just like a sort of design element? Not exactly like a blueberry, but like if these come like this, and then just have some like Kind of pokey bit. Kind of mimicking that without straight up looking like a blueberry. It's following the theme without being too matchy matchy. And then I think I'll skip the straps. Give her a dimple because I accidentally drew one. Definitely want this all to be the darkest of blues and this to be the darkest of blues. We can also mix a little purples in because blueberries happen to be quite purple. <laughs> Now I'm thinking I want this edge to be a bit more sharp since we are including some sharp elements of the blueberry. All right, I think it's time to add some color. I actually had purple paint in last, so that works. Let me see, I'm gonna first, well, actually, I actually don't wanna ruin that, I really like it. Um, I think we're gonna use a mixture of these two blues. We'll just call it blue and purple for my sake. Add a little bit of water. We'll start with a light wash of this all over the whole thing. And maybe, actually, I think I wanna mix these two colors. Okay, perfect. And I have that purple sketch. Oh, I never drew the hands. I think it's too light. Now with watercolors, you wanna start with the lightest tone first, right? I don't know. We can always go darker, but we can't really lift it too well, especially on this paper. So I'm just gonna go in and see what happens. I'm having so much fun with this on. I'm singing an orca. That's how much I like it. Now we can smidge closer to the purple. Let me get down here. It's gonna blend so nicely with that purple pencil. The purple pencil didn't even do that poorly with these colors, even though I thought it would might be a mistake, but holy moly, it's really, really working well on this one. And then we want straight purple probably for the hair. Eh, a little bit of blue in that. All right, that's feeling dry, so I'm gonna go in with our purple, darker purple blue. Oh, I might need it darker than that. Whoa, a little overboard, a little overboard. Mix it with this. That might be the color. I think it needs to go darker down here too. Go with that peacock blue color and kind of dilute it as I go up. I feel like it's not blue enough. I don't know if that's on camera. In person it looks very blue, but I'm looking at my viewfinder and it's a little too purple. And this looks white. So maybe I should try another layer of that. Add another wash on there. Oh yeah, that's way bluer. Okay, perfect. Weird thing with watercolors is you think you got up against the line, but then when it dries, you see all the places you missed. Definitely need some more experience. I like this one a lot. Yes. I don't even want to like put any line art on it. I think it speaks for itself, you know? Might put a little bit of blue on the eyeballs. Maybe some lips. Ooh, this is a mistake, this is a mistake. Might just add a little line art to the eyes just to make them pop a little but nowhere else. You hear that? Nowhere else. Oh, now that I had line art, I kind of want to do it to the whole thing, but no, not going to do it. Not going to do it. You know what you do when you like your art? You sign it. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? Pineapple. Hmm. The 
elements of a pineapple. You got your round pokey bit, lots of triangles. You got your long spiky bit. You got your greens and your yellows and your browns. So this is gonna be a much more spiky mermaid. Should I make it a merman? Nah, still feeling the mermaid. All right, so what worked really well here was starting small. So I'm gonna do that again. Now it's a very tall fruit. Like if you look at each individual section, it's kind of more short, but like all together, it's a very vertical fruit. Maybe a tall character would work for this. Keep it very pokey with the fins. Um, pokey with the hair seems like a good idea too. It's also a fruit that grows in Hawaii. Does it grow anywhere else? Hey Google, where do pineapples grow? Well, they grow all over the place. I still kind of want to give it a Hawaiian theme though. Oh, that explains it. Well, my ignorant butt thought they were only grown in uh, Hawaii, but it turns out in the 1960s, 80% of the world's pineapple production was in Hawaii, but now it's only like 2% just because it costs so much, you know, cause it's an island. But I think I'm still gonna try and follow like a Hawaiian theme and maybe a very touristy Hawaii vibe cause I'm not Hawaiian. So I couldn't even begin to do that properly. Would it be weird to give her like multiple fins? Three fins? Or, I mean, I guess I could do these guys and keep them really long and then some kind of lay. So lots of those little finny bits <laughs> for hair. I'd really love to just give one of these characters really big hair. Why not? Why not this one? You know, cause a pineapple has the big round shape and then the pokey bits. So maybe the body is like the long skinny shape and then the hair could be a more rounded large shape. It's not necessarily gonna be colored or textured like the body of a pineapple, but it's just kind of there to reference it. I should always draw small. It always just turns out better. <laughs> this could be the pineapple texture. Okay, I like it. I like it again. I think small is a lot easier to just focus on your shapes and your silhouette. I'm thinking for the larger one, I really like the personality of this. She seems very proud and uh, elegant. I wanna make sure I can fit that beautiful tail in here too. I don't want it to twist though. I might just have to draw her smaller. She has her big hair and her body. It has a cockroachy vibe to it that I'm not digging. Gross. I can use a lot more sharp edges because pineapples are pretty sharp. Not digging it. I like that one better. Here, that gives her that kind of proud stance that I was looking for. Puffing out her chest a bit. Add this so I can figure out the texture. Give her like a bandeau. That feels summery and tropical to me. <laughs> it looks like Trelawney hair. And I completely forgot arms. So this is the side. This is where these weird little guys would come out. I literally found a dead fish in our front yard <laughs> last week and it had these thingies. It's a shame something had to die to give me this inspiration, but that's what happened. That's the truth, man. But yeah, about the fish, I'm trying to figure out how it got there. I assume a bird picked it up, but it was like a massive pike. Like its skull was this big. I don't know what bird. Look, look at that. Look at the size of a skull. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. I was like that. Ugh, okay. Oh, and I should probably mention it wasn't a whole fish. It was only like half the fish. So it was like still huge, but I'll just say I don't go out looking for dead fish. So that was a surprise. <laughs> But now I get to draw these funny things. It's a little extra finnies. All right, now we got lots of little things down there. Little these things make it look more like leaves. All right, and then I was thinking it would be made out of like pineapple rings <laughs> or something that looks like pineapple rings. We can throw in an arm there and the other arm. Okay, and I'm gonna try to remember to draw the hands this time. I'm thinking about adding like that Lilo and Stitch sort of pattern to this and this, but I don't know if that's a little too much. A little something on the wrist so that they're not naked. Hey, I like this. Okay, hey, hey, hey. This is a little crowded, but there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not sure if you're supposed to grab the most color. Let's do all the green stuff. Let me see what it looks like with green hair. Is that just too much green? Because these are gonna be green. This is green, this is green, this is green. Then we need a yellow pineapple -y color. And then we'll have brown. Maybe her hair should be brown. Um. <laughs> As that dries, it'll lighten up a little too. 
I forgot how much I like these watercolors. They're kind of chalkier. Maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, there we go. Hey, that works perfectly. That's like right smack the color I want. Not sure about the hair, but I know this needs to be kind of brown. I'll clean the brush and grab that. What color is that? It's called natural brown. That's exactly lightness smidge. Go in with that. And then I'll add darker bits to the edges of those, I don't know, squares? I don't know. That's texture. The more you dilute the colors, the more wobbly the paper is going to get because, like I said earlier, it's not watercolor paper. I'm going to need a reference for this. To create that pineapple texture. I've actually painted a pineapple before. So I'm using a little bit of that knowledge that I've retained. I think this is going to be a lot about like building this color up. The text, building the texture up, I mean. I added it when it was still kind of wet so that it would blend out a little bit. And then when that dries, I'm probably going to go over it again with a little bit of a darker. <coughs> oh, actually, you know what? This bandeau could be green. Straight green. Oh yeah, I love the green next to the yellow. And then we need this green for these doohickeys. We wanna do this. I'm gonna have to go over those again. Not quite as vibrant as I want them to be. And a lot of that probably is the purple pencil. My bad. Just looking at what we've got so far, I think brown hair is probably gonna make the most sense. Or like this sort of color once I've layered it a bit more. Hmm, I wonder if I'm gonna have to go to a marker to get the right brown color. I mean, I'm sure if I just kind of layer this directly, I'm just worried it's gonna be too dark. Yeah, it's a little too dark, eek. That green hair is growing on me. I mean, brown's more natural. A little bit of that gold is like a blush. I think we're gonna have to go brown for the hair. As much as I kind of really like that vibrant sap green color. All right, so we're gonna take that natural brown might dilute it a smidge. So let's just throw it in there. Oh, is this a good decision? It does kind of make it more overwhelmingly brown. I could add a little gold to it. Eh, no. Did I just ruin it? Come on. I think the problem I'm having is there's like no contrast. Everything's kind of the same pastel blob. Maybe we just go sh super dark with the hair. Oof. Oof. Oof! This is why I don't do it. I'm so scared. You'll see it's like kind of just floating there, the pigment. Oof. Uh, definitely adds the contrast I'm looking for. Is there a way to add like a darker green down here? Kind of push some of the contrast lower. Hey! I think it pulled it well, I think it pulled itself together at the last minute. I think the eyes definitely probably need to be brought out somehow, maybe with this guy. Blueberry might still be my favorite, but I like this one too. It definitely speaks pineapple to me, and that was the goal, so... <laughs> no complaints there. This gel pen is working better. I'd like to make these pineapples a little juicier, but that just might not be in the cards. Definitely needs like some kind of line with them. That's what I would really like to see. Should we do one more? Hmm? All right, what's the final one? Let's do one more, one more. Maybe I'll rush it, we'll see. All right, the fourth fruit is lemon. Oh, I don't wanna rush that. <laughs> I don't wanna rush a lemon. It seems like with the, one, the fruits that are like one solid color, it makes sense to do that one solid color theme. Whereas like, although that's a, the skin tone was part of the fruit. This is the only one that kind of doesn't fit the theme here. So let's stick with that. Now, lemons are like that really weird shape. A lemon. <laughs> so I think it'd be a smart idea to kind of follow that shape for our character. So we got a head, and we have the lemon shape. We we'll use it as kind of inspiration. So maybe like little fins down here. And a little head up here. Then what about hair? What about like a little bun? Oh! <laughs> it's kind of cute. And then the little lemon dimples. And then I definitely want to take some inspiration from like the inside. What with all that like beautiful intricate pattern. That weird. It's kind of what I did with the watermelon though. Oh, and then we can use little round shapes, kind of like the end of the watermelon. <laughs> Lemon. Oh my gosh. She looks like she should wear pearls. Bring one of those arms up. A little apron. The straight up and down was not working for me. I have to look up a reference for what the inside of the lemon looks like. It's very classy looking. Kind of reminds me of the Flintstones. <laughs> I think the only colors we could probably use is yellow, white, and maybe green if you include like leaves. <laughs> A 
lemons are sour. Do I want to include <laughs> that personality trait? Because she doesn't look sour to me. Let's try drawing it larger. No, 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 no. Just kind of use big flowy shapes. Oh, so much for a sour face. That's like pleasant like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I really like the idea of the small hands. I think that's cute. Oh, it's like Cinderella, actually. I don't know why this speaks lemon to me. This haircut. <laughs> Let's actually draw hands this time. <laughs> Keep promising to do that. Some hands. <laughs> A little tie in the back. Actually, it would be cute as if the apron thing was green. But the point was to include the shape of a inside of the lemon. You can make that green. I kind of like the sketch without any color on it and I'm worried about ruining it. I think I'm gonna leave this white. Yellow, yellow, white, yellow. Potentially green. I don't hate it. So it might be green. Yellow, white, yellow. And then this part is gonna be green. So let's grab some of that yellow that I really like. I really like the way it turns the purple into like this gold color when it sits on it long enough. That's all yellow. Trying to go over as much of the purple as possible because it turns to that gold color I mentioned as it dries. And the less purple showing, probably the better. And here. Okay, now I need to color in these little guys. Check a reference of a lemon to see if the inside's a bit of a different color. If anything, it's maybe a little lighter. And I might add some kind of texture to that besides the pencil. We'll see when it dries. That's something you gotta wait to do. Probably can go in and add the green. Layer that over the yellow. Might need a couple layers. I think I'm gonna go with the green hair. Cause I kinda miss the green hair over here. That's not the only reason. It's one of them. I might wanna layer. I'm gonna try and layer green over that again. See if I can get it more green. I feel like it faded up here on the face. And then maybe I'll take some of this brown left over from the pineapple and color in the dimples. I think I want the green more vibrant. I might want that green, but I gotta wait for it to dry. I'm so impatient. I think I might bring the lemon slices up here. It's just too much white, although I'm already regretting it. So there's that. Yeah, this is definitely the green I need. It seems more lemony, lemony snicket. So I'm just gonna cover over all that lime sap green color. Pretty as it is, it doesn't fit my needs. So I'm cutting it out of my life. On camera, it looks almost black. I hope it looks better in editing. Get <laughs> some texture to these. Hopefully when they dry, they'll still show up. And then like a little shading under these pearls would be really nice. Kinda looks a little bit too banana-y. Maybe too much brown. I'm now gonna forever call those lemon chins. <laughs> I should have given her hair this kind of similar shape to be more like leaves instead of the top of a lemon. I think that would have been smarter. But other than that, it's just kind of like little mistakes that happened along the way <laughs> that are kind of hard to avoid until, you know, you get the experience. I wish the white popped a little more and maybe adding line art would fix that, but kind of going with a line artless theme here. He already looks like a lemon. <laughs> Definitely need to practice drawing my citrusy shapes, but I'm guessing there's going to be more. So there'll be time for that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out whether I like lemon or blueberry butter or pineapple. I mean, I know she's not my fave. <laughs> I think these are all pretty good starts. I'd love to explore them a little bit more and actually like bring a piece together, but obviously I'm behind. <laughs> I want to get caught up to day six, but I think I need a little break. <laughs> Not sure how much mermaid content y'all are looking for, but maybe for the future, I'll try to like sit down and work on one a day and maybe record a little bit and then compile it so that I spend more time on each individual design. I think that would be the best way to approach it. Maybe next time I'll use markers to have a little bit more experience with. So yeah, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you're working on your own mermaid. I know not everybody can, but it's fun to like jump in in there here and there when you can. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.